The next thing we're going to discuss is significant figures. Significant figures basically indicate how precise a measurement is. And significant figures include the number of all the known digits reported in a measurement, plus one digit that is estimated. Um, and the number of significant figures is indicative of how precise a measurement is. The more significant figures a measurement has, the more precise it is. So by giving a correct number of significant figures, you are indicating to the person reading your scientific information or that you are talking about your scientific information to, you're indicating to them how precise your measurements were. Um, and so real quick, let's review the difference between precision and accuracy. And in this page, we have some pictures to help us here. Um, remember, precision is how close measurements are to each other. So in this picture, we have several shots taken at a dartboard that all wound up in generally the same place. And even though they are not in the middle of the target where you might want your, tar your darts to hit, they are still all close together, so that those shots at the target, per se, are very precise, even though they are not actually very close to where we wanted them to be, which is in the middle. So accuracy is a measure of how close the measured value is to the accepted value. So if uh, a brick is supposed to be six inches long, and you measure that it is eight inches long, that wouldn't be a very accurate measurement. It's not close to the accepted value. So as you can see, these dart shots here are pretty close to the center of the bullseye. They're pretty accurate, but they're far apart from one another, which makes them not very precise. So. That when we are looking at significant figures, we are indicating how precise something is. Not necessarily how accurate, but how precise it is. And so there are lots of rules for recognizing if a digit is significant or not. And throughout chemistry class, you will hear me say the word significant digit and significant figure. And those two things mean the same thing. Figure, digit, they both mean uh, the same thing, so we can use them interchangeably. So we have five rules for recognizing whether a digit is significant. And we're gonna go through all these rules and fill in the rule first, and then we'll go back and do some examples to kind of look at what the rule means. So the first rule is that you start counting significant figures at the first non-zero digit. So any zeros, that are in front of the first non-zero number, we call those leading zeros. I'm going to write that here, leading, leading zero. Leading zeros are never significant. You st start counting at the first non-zero digit. And you know what, let's just do the examples as we go. So our example here, we have a zero in front we have two zeros in front of the first non-zero number. So our first non-zero digit, and I'll do it in a different color, would be this seven right here. So we start counting there, and so we have one, two, three significant figures. Uh, so let's go back to a darker color. We have three significant figures. I'm just gonna put SF, that's how I abbreviate significant figures, and you'll see that a lot in this class. Ooh. Need to erase for a second. Not looking so good here. Let's make that a little neater. Three significant figures. Okay, our second rule says that non zero numbers are always significant. Always significant. So, regardless of where they are in the line of numbers, they are always significant. So, here we have 72.3. All three of those digits are significant because they are non-zero numbers. So we have three significant figures here as well. That one's pretty simple. Rule number three says trailing zeros at the end of a number are significant 
if and only if, that's what this IFF -F means, if you've uh, n never seen that in math class, if, if and only if, they are to the right of a decimal point. Let's go back to the black here, to the right, right of the decimal point. So there are some cases where trailing zeros are significant when they're to the right of the decimal point, and there are other cases where those zeros exist at the end of the number, but there's no decimal point, so they are non-significant. We're going to look at examples of both of those things here. So in example one, we have 6.20. And so we start, start counting at the first non-zero number, which would be six. So we have one significant figure, two significant figures, and then because of this decimal point right here, because that decimal point is there, this zero is to the right of the decimal point, and so it is significant. So we have one, two, three significant figures here. Three SF. Looking at example two, we still are starting with a six, which is a non-zero number. We we'll start with the first non-zero number. So one significant figure, two significant figures, and then we have a trailing zero again, but there's no decimal point. So that zero is not significant. Because there's no decimal point, we only have one, two significant figures in this second number. So trailing zeros, zeros at the end of the number, are only sometimes significant. You have to look at whether they are after a decimal point or whether there is no decimal point. All right, rule number four. Zeros between two non-zero numbers are always significant. Always, always significant. So here we have this nice little zero here. He is sandwiched between a six and a two. So we know that zero is significant because it's between two non-zero numbers, between a six and a two. So every digit here is significant. So we have three significant figures, okay? And then the last rule says that leading zeros, zeros that are at the beginning of a number, are never significant. Never significant. So any leading zeros, they're non-significant. And that kind of goes right back to rule number one, which says we start counting significant figures when we hit the first non-zero digit. So all these zeros here, zero, 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 those are all not significant. We don't start counting till we hit the first non-zero number. So we start counting at two, so we have one significant figure. And then we have to decide, is this zero significant? And based on rule number three, we look at and say, okay, I have a trailing zero, but it is to the right of a decimal point, so I know that it is significant. So we have one sig fig, two sig figs, two significant figures. And then our last example here, we have zero, 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 two, two. We start counting at the first non-zero number, so we start counting with the first two, and those are both non-zero numbers, so two and two are both significant, so we still have two significant figures. All right, moving right along we don't just want to look at individual numbers. We want to be able to do math with numbers uh, and still have correct significant figures at the end of us doing our math problem. So we have some rules for adding or subtracting significant figures and also for multiplying and dividing significant figures. These rules, to be honest, can be a little bit confusing. Um, for instance, because the addition and subtraction of significant figures really has nothing to do with significant figures. Instead, we are looking at the number of decimal places. Decimal places that the uh, two numbers that you are adding or subtracting have. So your answer to an addition or subtraction problem should have the same number of decimal places as the value with the least number of decimal places. The least number of decimal places. So in example, this first one here, we have 2.2, .2, and we look at that and we say, okay, there's one decimal place here, okay? 
and then plus 3.76, and there are two decimal places here. So which number has the least number of decimal places? Well, that would be 2.2. So we're going to have one decimal place in our final answer over here. So first we need to add the two numbers together. So if you get out your calculator, let's see, we got 2.2 plus 3.76. And yes, I probably could do that in my head, but I'm just being lazy right now. When I added those two numbers together, I got 5.96, but that still has two decimal places, and I know that I need to round to one decimal place. So following basic rounding rules, I'm going to round to this first decimal place, and since the next digit over is a 6, it's above 5, it's going to make the 9 round up, which is actually a little complicated here, so we're going to have 5.9. 9, but the 9 rounds up to 10, which actually will make us have 6.0. It is important that we put that 0, .0 so that we do still have one decimal place here because our sig fig rule says that we need to round to one decimal place. So 6.0 would be the correct answer here. Looking at this next example, 14 minus 1.8. So we have the same number of significant figures in each of these values, but remember, this is subtraction, so we are not looking at sig figs, we are looking at decimal places. So 14 has zero decimal places, 1.8 has one decimal place, so zero is less than one, so we're going to go with zero decimal places on our final answer. So 14 minus 1.8, that gives me 12.2. I still have a decimal place, so I need to get rid of that. So I need to round my number so it has no decimal places. So I'm going to round to this 2 right here. Uh, 2 would make this round down to 12. So my final answer is just going to be 12. So 12 and 6.0. All right. And then last but not least, significant figures for multiplication and division. When doing multiplication and division, it does have to do with significant figures. Your answer should have the same number of sig figs as the value with the least number of significant figures. Least number of significant figures. So we can look at both of our values in this first example. 42.2. We start counting at the first non-zero number, so 4 is a significant digit, 2 significant, and 2 significant, giving us 3 significant figures. 3.5. Both of those are non-zero numbers, so we have 1, 2 significant figures. The least number of significant figures is in 3.5. It has 2 sig figs, so our final answer should have 2 sig figs. So now I need a calculator for this one, so let's multiply this out. 42.2 times 3.5, that gives us 147.7, but we need to round that to two significant figures. So we get this first significant figure and this second significant figure, and then from there we need to round. So this 4, because there's a 7 to the right, that's going to make the 4 round up to a 5. So I'm going to write 1, 5, but 15 is not even close to 147.7. So what do I fill in to the space that had the 7? I fill in a 0 to indicate that we have over 100 here. We fill a 0 into the 1's place. So 150 is our answer rounded to two significant figures, 150. All right, so then one more example. We have 80 times 2.1. 80, we have 1. That first 8 is definitely significant. And then we need to go back to our sig fig rules because we have a trailing 0 here. So rule number 3 said trailing zeros are significant if and only if they're to the right of a decimal point. So coming back... This zero is not to the right of a decimal point, so it is not significant. Not significant figure. Okay, so we only have one significant figure here, and then 
Both are non-zeros, so we have two significant figures. Our least number of significant figures is going to be an 80 with one sig fig. So we know our final answer needs to be rounded to one significant figure. So let's see, 80 times 2.1, that gives us 168. And oh my goodness, we need to round to only one significant figure. We need to round just to this first place. This 6 is going to make the 1 round up to a 2. And then I need to fill in zeros for my other two place values, for my 10's place and for my 1's place. So we round that answer to 200. That seems like a big round, but remember, it's not right for us to have an answer that is more precise than the least precise measurement. Our least precise measurement only has one significant figure, so our answer also can only have one significant figure.